I will be co-presenting today's professional development webinar with four collegiate commissions representing in-state institutions of higher learning. They are Ms. Amanda Hardy, Director of Admissions with Birmingham Southern College, Shanquita Alexander, Director of Admissions and Registrar at Chattahoochee Valley Community College, Valerie Allen Porterfield, Director of Admissions and Enrollment Management at Trent Home State Community College, and Gus McKenzie, Senior Director of Enrollment Services and Admissions at Troy University. We thank them all for coming, but I hope that you all notice that uh, Mr. McKenzie is already out in the field. So we thank you again so much um, to the four of you for participating. Our representatives will be sharing information about what they're looking for in an applicant, testing requirements, scholarship opportunity, opportunities, and other highlights pertaining to their individual institutions. Now let's look at our sponsors. We'd like to recognize and thank them for supporting this effort and making this webinar possible. Without their support, Alabama Possible would not be able to provide assistance that we do without a participation fee. Thank you to our great partners, Alabama Commission on High, Higher Education, Alabama Community College System, Alabama State Department of Education, and the Get Educated and Common Black College application that helps promote applying and enrolling at least 65 historically Black colleges and universities. A few housekeeping tips um, before we get started. Please keep your microphones on mute at all time to avoid any feedback during the presentation. This webinar will be recorded and posted to YouTube um, at our channel at YouTube forward slash Alabama Possible should you want to revisit any of this content. You can submit questions and we do encourage it throughout the webinar using the chat feature. We will collect those questions and answer them towards the end of the presentation. In addition, we have poll questions throughout the webinar, which are designed to get your real-time real feedback. We would love it if everyone would participate in these poll questions. This portion of the webinar is especially important if you are a high school educator. It is imperative that you stay through the end of the webinar because there will be poll questions at the very end. By doing this, you will be able and eligible to receive professional development credit. Answering the questions will not be time consuming as we understand that you are exceptionally busy and we hope that this lessens the burden of having to complete a separate survey after the webinar. Now, as far as our social media, um, please share your efforts using the various platforms of social media as you continue building a college-going culture um, at your high school and within the community. Now let's look at our campaign components. We do have three, and our first one is Cash for College. The Cash for College goal is for every graduating senior to complete the FAFSA, which of course is our free application for federal student aid before they graduate from high school so that they can access federal, state, and institutional aid to pay for their education after high school. Second is the Alabama College Application Campaign. The Alabama College Application Campaign is part of a national effort to increase the knowledge of first-generation college students and students from low-income families pursuing a college degree or a other higher education credential. The primary purpose of this effort is to help high school seniors navigate the complex college application and admissions process to ensure that they apply to at least one post-secondary institution. And our third component is the College and Career Decision Day. College and Career Decision Day celebrates students committing to pursuing their education past high school, whether to obtain a two-year degree, a four-year degree, 
a certificate or industry recognized credential, entering the military or pursuing a skilled trade. Now let's look at our first poll question, which is what factor is most important to your students as they decide where to apply? Um, May, if you would deploy that, that poll for us and then let us know what the results are. Absolutely, so you should see that on your screen. And once you select an option and then submit, we'll have record of your submission. So I will wait until we have the majority of folks on the line with us um, responding to this question. And if you select other, if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and drop in the chat what you think is one of the biggest factors for your students. We would love to hear what other things your students are thinking about. All right, almost everyone has responded. So I am going to attempt to share the results to the screen so that everyone can see those answers. So hopefully you're able to see alongside with me, but an overwhelming majority of folks said that cost of attendance is the most important factor to their students. Unsurprisingly, that I think is the most common response year to year. And then of course, major and program options coming in second. So we'll definitely hear from our panelists today on some aspects of financial aid at their institutions, and then as well as the programs and major options at their respective institutions. So thank you so much for your responses and we will continue on with the presentation. Thank you, May. Um, so let's look at why post-secondary education is important. And we know that everyone does, but we wanted to give you a highlight looking at the percentage growth. Um, so according to the Alabama Education and Training Outlook, occupational projections for 2020 to, 20, to 2030, prepared by the Alabama Department of Labor and Labor Market Information Division, Occupations typically requiring a master's degree are projected to grow the fastest over the period, followed by a doctoral or professional degree and the associate degree occupations. The education classification showing the slowest uh, growth, including some college, no degree, is at 1% and high school diploma or equivalent at 4.2%. Now, our second slide um, addressing why post-secondary education is important is looking at the median salaries. And occupations requiring some college, no degree, and higher surpass the annual median wage for all occupations by $36,253. Doctoral or professional degree occupations report the highest wage in 2020, followed by master's degree and bachelor's degree as occupations respectively. No formal education credential occupations are the lowest earning, falling $14,002 below the total median. Now, not that you all need a reminder, but we are in the Alabama College application campaign season. And next week is the kickoff of this wonderful campaign with the Alabama College Application Week, which will be October 16th through the 20th. And we wish you all much success. Now, as far as educator resources, um, you all will receive this slide deck in a PDF format. So that will give you access to the link to our educators toolkit um, at the hyperlink below. And as a reminder for some and to inform others, we do have our educators handbook and our guidebook for students and families that are also available in our toolkit.
our help desk, we want to make sure that you all do not hesitate to contact us ever. You can share this information with your students and with their families. Um, our telephone number where you can reach us during the weekdays, during business hours, is 334-316-6155. And we also um, encourage you to look at our different areas of social media so that you can remain informed. Now, as I call the name of our guests, we ask them to give their name, the institution that they're representing, and the best piece of advice that they could give you as an educator. Our presenters will go in the following order. Ms. Hardy, Ms. Alexander, Ms. Allen Porterfield, and Mr. McKenzie. Ms. Hardy, the floor is yours. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm thrilled to see so many participants in here, though it does make me nervous that it's being recorded and will be on uh, YouTube for viewing. Um, make sure I'm getting my words right here. Um, so I am the Director of Admission at Birmingham Southern College and have been here for about three years. And um, the uh, biggest piece of advice that I, I could share with you to pass along to your students is encouraging them to visit campus, whether it's, um, you know, once they've applied or once they've been admitted, but the importance of a student feeling that fit for them on campus um, is, is really important. And so that's what I would encourage. All right. Thank you, um, Ms. Alexander. Good morning and thank you all for inviting me as well. Um, my name is Sequita Alexander. I'm the Director of Admissions and Registrar. And we at Chattanooga Valley also have a recruiter that usually goes to the high school. So more people may be familiar with the recruiter than us here that really stay here in their office and actually process and make sure that the students get the information they need via email, uh, via snail mail, however. Um, I am from Chattanooga Valley Community College in Phoenix City, Alabama. And I guess the advice I could give to students would be to, yes, visit our campus, but also apply for admissions you know, to college in a timely manner so that we can get the information back to the students that they need and you know, get everything going and then assess what they need so we can then uh, assign them an academic advisor and a success coach that will help lead them along the journey. All right, thank you very much. And Ms. Allen Porterfield. Hello, my name is Valerie Allen Porterfield and I serve as the Director of Admissions and Enrollment Management here at Trenum State Community College. And it's a pleasure to be on the call this morning. Um, the best advice that I could give is to apply early uh, to the college as well as apply for financial aid as soon as the um, financial aid application um, opens and stay connected um, with the admissions um, staff as well as your financial aid counselors and to also be familiar with the programs um, that the uh, well community colleges or the colleges offer and to know what type of work that you're really truly interested in. All right, thank you so much. And last but not least, Mr. McKenzie. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Gus McKenzie. I'm the Assistant Director of Enrollment Services at Troy University in Troy, Alabama. I'm thrilled to be here. As you can see, I'm uh, on the road at a college fair this morning. So um, we like to get out and meet students. Uh, my best piece of advice for students um, and for parents is uh, A, the main form of communication that most of us use is email. Um, so high school students are not used to checking their email. They need to get used to it uh, for a university world um, and then get connected with your admissions representative, whether that's a recruiter or a director or an assistant director, whoever that is. Uh, it's our job to help a student through the process. Um, and a lot of us are good at our jobs. We like helping students and uh, pushing them through the process and helping them figure out where their fit is gonna be. So just connected with these folks that, that care about you as a student. All right, thank you very much. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into these questions. Know that the FAFSA will be deploying in December. So any information that you can share um, 
you know, regarding that process, feel free to do so. Um, we don't have key questions, but that's definitely something that you can add. Um, but right now, let's look at the enrollment process. So, uh, Ms. Hardy, what methods does your institution use to attract students? Um, great question. So at Birmingham Southern College, we are doing our best to get um, information to students um, in a number of ways. We're trying to, um, you know, first and foremost, get their attention, as, as Gus mentioned, um, via email, sending them a lot of information. And uh, we know sometimes that doesn't go farther than the inbox. Um, but we are inviting students um, to meet with their admission counselor. So we're trying to build those relationships um, from the beginning so that um, students will feel comfortable with that person and, and be comfortable asking them questions, not just about majors that are on campus, but certainly about financial aid when that um, when that becomes a part of the conversation. We are um, trying to attract students to campus with um, our, our daily campus tour program. We've got a, a preview day coming up at the end of next week. We are trying to reach out to students about specific um, academic majors and things that might be uh, specifically of interest to them. We are out on the road recruiting, meeting students um, at, at high school visits, at college fairs. Um, we've also added um, some more of, of what we're calling um, coffee chats, coffee uh, visits, where um, you know we'll have a, a recruiter out in a, a, a coffee house. You know, they might be like uh, uh, guests out in the road in, um, in the morning, and then you know in the afternoon after school hours, uh, maybe you can meet up with someone if you have some more specific questions at at a local coffee shop near near your high school and near your home. So we are um, doing our best to try to get the word out there that we are um, an option for students. I think often as um, a private school, there is a mentality that that's um, uh, unaffordable right off the bat. And I would encourage students to not have that mindset. Um, I'm, I'm a product of public schools because my parents um, believed that, you know, we could not afford to go to, to um, a private school, but even though the FAFSA is not available just yet, and, um, you know, we're hoping it'll be available closer to the beginning of December than the end of December, but knowing the government, we're not sure when in December, um, we are working to create um, a form, if you will, for students to fill out some information, and, and we'll be able to give um, an, an estimate of what a financial aid package would look like. We're confident that that will be similar to what the FAFSA um, numbers will, will provide, and so, you know, we're um, hoping that that's going to be, you know, what we'll, uh, you know, make a promise to that student once, once that form has been filled out, that that's what we'll be able to uh, accommodate as long as they do fill out the FAFSA once it becomes available and we, we make sure our numbers are, are close and similar. So um, we're trying our best to um, let students know that that options are still here for them. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Um, Ms. Alexander, uh is there anything different that you all do at Chattahoochee Valley regarding um, attracting students and getting the word out to them? Yes, there, there are many things that we do at CVCC so that students and the community will notice us. Um, just a few things to, to rattle off besides the website, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, we use those mediums to get students to look at us and then pass them along to family and friends. That's how word of mouth gets out for us. We also have a summer bus tour mm -hmm. where we will set up at, uh, we will ride the bus. We will set up at uh, community stores, Piggly Wigglies, restaurants, and we have a tent set up with table and, and wealth of information. And while we're there, we give away a scholarship. So students have a chance to apply for admissions, to hear all about the many programs that we do offer. And also uh, most times get to meet our pirates who uh, may go along as well to attract those students and attract those younger ones who say, hey, what's this going on over there? We also have what we call a fall kickoff for the community. And it's a fun day. Um, 
We have different games. We have a registration table set up. Financial aid is there to answer any questions. We have vendors on site that may you know, sell their different items, but we do those type of things to attract people to us. And so far it has been very successful. I also mentioned too that our recruiter does go to the local high schools in Columbus, Georgia, as well as Phoenix City, Alabama, because of how we're situated. Two minutes and we're into Columbus, Georgia. So we have a multifaceted community that we have access to, as well as now Fort Moore, which was formerly Fort Benning, Georgia. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Well, that's super helpful for me because I'm not from Alabama. So to know that you all are so close to Columbus, that's definitely um, a little something that I'll definitely have to remember. Um, Ms. Allen Porterfield, what about you all at Trenum State? Um, I don't want to sound redundant, but um, we have established a very strong relationship um, with the counselors um, at our local high schools where we invite them out um, to see some of the great things that we're doing here at Trenum State Community College, as well as preview days as well. Um, we're also using social media um, to uh, connect with students where they are, as well as uh, email and uh, soon a uh, print mail is coming back uh, by way of another um, vendor that we'll be using um, soon Soon uh, coming up. But um, for the most part, it's a lot of uh, what the other community colleges are doing um, in our uh, local system. Um, the big thing is making sure that we keep the students engaged. Um, those students that do apply, staying in contact with them, um, helping them through the admissions process, um, you know, with admissions counseling, and then just making sure that the community, you know, knows who we are, you know, through our, you know, advertisements and promotions, billboards, social media, um, staying inside of the um, local high schools and just, um, you know, really being present. We uh, do all these things that all the other universities and community colleges do. That's kind of um, all tools of the trade in our world. But um, the best sales pitch I would say for Troy is is anyone with a Troy story, um, a Troy alumnus um, who uh, can share their experience, whether they had uh, a Troy main campus experience or one of the three satellite campuses in Montgomery, Phoenix City, or Dothan, uh, or a Troy online story. And uh, somebody like myself who did an undergraduate degree on the Troy main campus and then is about to finish up a graduate degree with Troy online uh, could speak highly uh, of either direction to go with Troy. So um, just connecting with alumni, current students, uh, we try to pair those uh, potential students up with folks who are in the Troy experience or have completed it uh, to help show them what Troy could do for them and propel their future. Wonderful. Well, we all know that um, everything travels by word of mouth. So anytime um, an institution has alumni that are actively engaged and want to take some of the burden off of recruitment, we always encourage that. I am sure. I know I used to do it. <laughs> um, all right. So once a student is accepted, uh, with enrollment, what are their next steps um, at out at um, Birmingham Southern? Great. Um, once a student has been admitted, um, and we notify them both um, via email as well as snail mail, um, we want to make sure that they are um, prepared for what they need to do um, before they make their college decision, right? So we want to make sure that the financial aid package is prepared for them. So if they are admitted and have not submitted the FAFSA to us yet, we make sure that we're following up with them um, because we don't want anyone to commit before they know what the cost is going to be. Um, that is just a very important component of what we're doing in our office. Um, so we want to make sure that they have um, gotten the, the financial aid um, package. So we work with them to make sure that that's squared away and bring in our financial aid office when we need to. Um, we also want to make sure that students are um, preparing for what they're going to be involved in on campus. So we want to make sure that they're um, academic interest is available here, right? We want to make sure that um, they're, you know, if they're, they're playing sport that, you know, they're in contact with their coach and their team. We also want to make sure um, that they are 
visiting us again on campus. So, you know, a campus visit from before you've applied versus after you've been admitted, it's just a different mindset for a student and a family. And so we want to make sure that they're, you know, having that opportunity. So we have some specific admitted student events on the calendar in the spring semester that allows for students to, again, hear our information session, you know, remember who we are, where we know they've applied to many schools. We also, um, you know, give them that tour of campus, but as an admitted student, we kind of add a couple of additional components into that tour. Um, and then we also give them the opportunity to sit in on a class. And so we prepare them, um, you know, with, uh, with one of our notebooks. And so they go to class prepared with a notebook and a pen and they sit in on a, on a class. They tell us in the morning when they arrive, you know, we give them the, the list of options of what's available. And that gives them a chance to see what uh, a college class looks like. Um, I would be a nervous wreck as um, a student because I wanna always make sure I've done my homework and just coming into class would probably scare me, but um, the professors know that they're there as visitors, and I think our our yellow notebooks kind of uh, you know give them away as uh, not uh, traditional students in the class, if you will. But that gives students an opportunity, and then when students are in that class, we speak with this with the parents and family, um, and our our student um, student uh, development office goes over you know some more information of, of what families can expect while their students are here and, and what's available um, for student resources as well as family resources and so those are days that really give us an opportunity to to give those admitted students that chance to picture themselves here on campus um, and then you know we want to make sure that they've they've looked at all of the options and know, and then once they decide to enroll, we'll, we'll help them through the enrollment process, but it's online. They pay their $300 deposit to save their space and, um, and their residence hall. And so um, their, their room in a residence hall. And so then we get ready for summer orientation. Wonderful. I do have one quick question for you. Do you all have an application fee? We do not. Okay. We are That's... a free application, even though students are waiting for next week's free application week, we are free at all times. <laughs> all right. Wonderful. Um, as far as a representative um, with our community college system, um, Ms. Allen Porterfield, do you all have a different form of um, working with students during the enrollment process? Well, um, within a... Um, community college system, of course, we have open enrollment. So upon application, um, students are accepted uh, to the community college. They receive a letter of acceptance um, within 24 to 48 hours um, with, you know, with some of our schools. Some of them, you know, maybe a, a day later, but they're going to receive communications um, very quickly um, with us giving them the next steps um, for some of the colleges. Um, that could be um, a visit you know, to the campus, you know, uh, following up on financial aid. We do have our uh, new student orientation sessions that we have during the summer um, for students. And we also um, start working with um, students coming out of the high schools who are interested in our ambassador um, programs, um, as well as the Student Government Association coming in. Um, to just increase engagement with some of those students as well. So it's a very busy time. And then we also have um, our advising and registration days. We also have advising and registration days several times during um, each of the upcoming semesters where we invite the students and their parents out to the campus to uh, meet with the faculty advisors, to look at their degree plans, to select courses, um, to uh, go through to go through financial aid and um, you know just to look at everything that the student needs to be involved in in order to you know so that they can be successful um, coming into the college. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Thank now, you. I'm, I'm going to pose this question to all four of you so you can um, jump in with any insight that you have, but. Um, what is the process or do you have a special process for admitting and enrolling um, undocumented students? We do accept um, and enroll undocumented students. Um, we um, review their application just the same. We admit them based on their high school merits. 
We um, offer them merit-based scholarships upon admission, as we do for all applicants. Um, so the, the different piece there really comes to the FAFSA. So any students that are not eligible to complete the FAFSA, we do have a separate form. Um, and I know that that sometimes filling out any form for undocumented students um, can be um, something that causes hesitation or, or concern. Um, but really, we are asking for them to tell us some more information about uh, essentially how much money their family is willing to help them um, support them in, in their um, college tuition fees. And so um, we can use that information to um, determine additional grant and aid and scholarship money that we can offer those students. Um, we we will look at a student's, um, you know, if they complete that form and, and give us some information. If we see that a student, um, you know, would be Pell eligible, we do award grant and aid in, in that amount for those students. Um, so that is um, an opportunity for them. All right. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Do um, either of our three representatives have any information that they want to share on that topic? Um, at Troy, for us, it's a little bit different. Um, so for us, we have a large international student population on our campus. So um, for our domestic student application, it does require a social security number. Um, so that would be the determining factor for whether a student would fill out the domestic student application versus the international student application. Um, and then that person would be directed either to uh, our team, the domestic university uh, admission team or the international recruiting team, um, either one of which could help the student navigate the process. Okay, excellent. Thank you. And I'm trying to monitor our time. Um, and so what we're going to jump into anything dealing with scholarships. Um, so I'm, I'm going to open the floor for that. But some of the things that I know our educators have been curious about are merit based scholarships. Um, and if you, if your institution is not test optional, are the scholarships based on the app, the ACT or SAT test scores that's that they submit at that time, or if they can um, add ACT or SAT test scores um, to make their application look more robust. So if you're test optional, that's not even a question you need to uh, worry about, but we are looking about for any information regarding merit scholarships. And I'll just open the floor. I don't mind discussing our process a little bit. So um, at Troy, we have moved away from um, the ACT score in terms of admission process. So a student, um, if they don't wish to share that ACT score, they can still go through our admission process with just a high school GPA of a 2.5 or better uh, for conditional admission than a 3.0 or better for unconditional admission. Um, but for scholarships, we are still looking at the ACT for our biggest merit scholarships. So um, there are funding uh, sources available for students without a test score, uh, but at Troy and a few other institutions that I've noticed, the most scholarship money still comes from having a good ACT score. Um, it's never going to hurt you because most schools you can apply without it, uh, but it can certainly help you a ton having a good score. Um, so Troy's merit-based scholarships start at a 20 ACT super score uh, and kind of tick up from there uh, with different tiered systems. But uh, having a good ACT super score is always a good thing. So uh, educators encouraging your students to continue to take the ACT. I know for a while with COVID, it was hard to get into the test, but it looks like now students are able to get into that ACT um, as much as they want or, or are financially able to take it. Um, so definitely encourage that if they have the opportunity, um, they can receive the most funding with a test score at Troy. All right. Um, was there anyone else? I know, and not to put you on the spot, Amanda, but I know you had mentioned merit-based scholarships. So yeah. that's kind of how I rolled into this. <laughs> uh, so thank you. Well, let me continue. Down uh, that was good. <laughs> but feel free to, to share anything that you all have at Birmingham Southern. Absolutely. Um, so at Birmingham Southern, with every student that's admitted, um, they do receive a um, merit-based scholarship. And so we are, um, we have two admission routes that a, a student can choose to take. Um, we have our, our standard 
which includes test scores, um, ACT or SAT. Um, and then, um, you know, based on what scores are submitted, we do super score, we pull the best scores, you know, we're looking to benefit the student. Um, but we do also have a test optional um, route for students to apply. And so if they're going to apply test optionally, we do ask for an essay component from them just to hear a little bit more from the students. Um, but when we are looking at test optional students, we are looking a little bit um, more strongly, um, or I, I don't know, giving it a second look for the English scores, the math scores, looking to see how students did in those courses. Um, so based on um, whether they take tests or don't take tests in submitting for our admission, we do have scholarships, merit-based scholarships available for students. They do range from about $6,000 to uh, $14,000 for the year. And so um, generally, if we see a student that has below a 20 ACT, um, we do recommend, we'll reach out to them and ask them if they'd like to be um, reviewed test optionally. That is us not um, you know, changing their application process, but asking them with a strong recommendation that they, they go a test optional route. So usually students understand what we're saying and they'll, you know, submit something in an essay form. Honestly, most students have an essay submitted already. They're doing them for other colleges, so they just submit them to us. Um, and so that can be just a quick and easy. Um, so we are looking at those merit-based scholarships upon admission, and then we have um, a list of what we call special scholarships that students can additionally apply for, um, and those are an additional application, sometimes an interview, um, but we have um, our Stump op Entrepreneurship scholarship. We have a United Methodist um, Church scholarship, um, our Abrams scholars for students who um, are involved in, in Jewish life um, students. Uh, we have a cultural diversity scholarship, Comer for uh, in-state students who are interested in going to the education field, um, our Bonner Leader Program. Um, we have a, a Christian vocation scholarship, a legacy grant. Um, we have uh, opportunities through our visual and performing arts, so media and film studies, theater, music, um, musical theater, um, art, visual art, art history. Um, and we also have our distinguished scholars. So for our top candidates, we do recommend that they apply for distinguished scholars. And um, they're essentially applying for and, and interviewing on campus for um, all of them will tell you they are there to get the full tuition and um, fees scholarship. But among that, we also have um, two other uh, scholarships that cover tuition, not fees and room and board, um, and then um, several other, I think, between six and eight, we award to students um, that are very significant scholarships. But I know on that day, everyone's vying for the top scholarship, but there are a number that that we're um, they might potentially be awarded. So those are our, our different uh, merit-based uh, scholarship opportunities for students. All right, wonderful. And um, wanted to make sure I touch base with um, Ms. Allen Porterfield and also with Ms. Alexander regarding scholarships on our community college campuses. Um, here at uh, Trinum State Community College, we do offer the Educational Advancement Scholarship. Those are for students coming in from high school. Um, the requirement is a 2.5 uh, grade point average. Again, there's no test scores um, uh, that are required for that scholarship. Again, you have to be a first-time freshman, um, 2.5 grade point average. You have to submit an essay. That's about 500 words. Um, we have to encourage students not to be intimidated by that. There's literally one page type double space. And um, that's pretty much it. Um, make sure that the packet is complete. Um, and uh, with that, then all of those scholarships will review, will, you know, will be reviewed by a, uh, a committee. Uh, that's headed by our financial aid office. And then um, say for instance, a student is not um, eligible for a scholarship coming in out of high school, there's another opportunity uh, to receive um, the scholarship after completing 12 uh, uh, credit hours. Uh, those students who have a 3.5 at that point can apply for scholarship again. All right, so we, we have several scholarships that incoming high school seniors can apply for. Uh, we have the academic scholarship, 
and that's for students who possess a 3.0 GPA or higher um, that they can apply for. We have an ambassador scholarship, and that's for incoming seniors as well with a 2.7 GPA or higher that's graduating from high school. We have a leadership scholarship for students who possess a 2.75 or higher GPA. Then we have performing arts, fine arts, and athletic scholarships. That's just for incoming seniors. You know, that, that's available for them. We also have non-traditional or current student scholarships. And those may consist of like career technical uh, scholarships for students who are applying for uh, an applied associate of applied science degree. And they must have a cumulative 2.5 or higher GPA from the high school, GED, or college. Um, and then the currently enrolled students, they do get a chance to um, apply for a scholarship, but they must have a 3.0 or higher GPA and have completed at least 24 credit hours uh, during the fall or spring semester to be awarded for this one year scholarship. Non-traditional also have that opportunity to apply for a scholarship. And those are students who have not been enrolled for an academic year, but they have a 2.5 or higher GPA, uh, either from high school or college, and they are eligible to apply. Future leaders also, they have a scholarship that they can apply for, must maintain or have a 2.0 GPA. We have a senior adult scholarship, as well as student government association scholarships. And uh, in addition, we also have a CBCC foundation scholarship that students can apply for. Thank you so much. Well, I see these questions rolling in. Um, our panelists are aware we have a bunch of other questions that we had all prepared for, but I want to make sure that our educators who are participating with us today that they have an opportunity to get their questions answered. So um, we're going to take a pause to um, answer any questions. And um, May, at this time, do you have any questions that have not been answered or that need to be addressed that you see in the chat? Yes, I'll go ahead and read a few right now. So one question, and I think this has been touched on, but if other folks would like to respond, if a student is transferring from a community college or is a graduate of a community college, will they be required to have an ACT score for scholarships? Also, when a student transfers from a community college, will there be will their GPA from the community college be combined with their new GPA at the four year college? I can jump in and answer some of that um, as, as it pertains to Birmingham Southern. Um, so if a student is transferring to Birmingham Southern from a community college, um, they are not required to have ACT scores for scholarships. We will um, review based on their GPA um, from their uh, community college. Um, when they transfer, their GPA does not combine with their new GPA. So we use that GPA for admission. Um, you know, we're looking to make sure that they're prepared for the courses that that they're going to take here, same as what we're looking for, um, you know, in first year students, we want to set students up for success. Um, so um, their GPA starts fresh, um, same as, as a first year student would. So they're um, yeah, coming in without that GPA um, on their transcript. Troy, the um, the scholarships are going to be based upon that college GPA, but your GPA will stick with you. Um, so it will remain on your transcript. So uh, students considering the community college route, study hard. Um, it, it can continue with you um, at most state institutions. Great. Another question we have is, can students stack merit-based scholarships? At Troy, the answer is no. Um, just because the way our merit-based scholarship system works is that um, you're gonna fall into one of our scholarship categories. So it will be either the leadership scholarship, the chancellor scholarship or the scholars award or scholars plus. Um, so your merit um, or your ACT score and GPA will slot you into one of those scholarships. And then our foundation awards can be stacked on top and that is a different set of scholarships. At Birmingham Southern, 
um, the merit-based scholarships that you're awarded upon um, admission. Um, there are some opportunities for the special scholarships to stack on top of them, but not in every single situation. Um, so um, for the distinguished scholars, for example, if a student's receiving a $20,000 scholarship, that is going to take the place of their um, $14,000 um, scholarship. And so that um, is, um, is kind of re replacing, if you will, some of the visual and performing arts scholarships um, that are upwards of 16, 17,000 are going to replace um, the merit-based scholarship. But some of the scholarships um, are going to um, be able to, to be stacked. So if they're about 1,000, 1,500, um, usually those are stacked on top of what's awarded upon admission. So we try to be um, honest with students about which scholarships are going to be um, able to be stacked and, and which are going to more or less replace the, the merit base that they received upon admission. But, um, you know, we're trying to help the student and give them as, as much as possible, but also we're not in a position to be awarding them more than the cost of tuition. Thank you so much for your response. We have one more question. I think it might have been touched on, but for students, um, if they take the ACT and receive a higher score that would earn them more scholarship money, can they resubmit the higher score? And if so, is there a deadline for resubmission? So we have some students who are considering taking the December 9th ACT. So I touched on it in the chat. Um, the way Troy, we handled that, uh, we're always going to use what, uh, quote unquote, your, the best version of you is, is what I always say to the students. So your high score, your highest GPA, whether that's weighted or unweighted, uh, we're trying to always help the student. Um, at Troy, our priority scholarship deadline is December the 1st. And then after that, we award based upon funding availability. So um, it would depend on where the student is. Um, they can connect with their admissions counselor about should they take the test, should they not. Um, most of the time, the answer is yes, please continue to take it. Uh, we want to give you more scholarship money. Um, it's our job to help the students through the process, like I've said. So um, continue to test. It's always, always a good idea. Wonderful. Did anyone else want to respond to that question? I will. I know it was um, specified for Troy, but um, at Birmingham Southern, we are um, not, we do not accept additional scores after a student's application has been submitted. So if a student is planning to take a later um, test date, we do encourage them to let their admission counselor know. Um, and that way we can kind of hold off on reviewing their application and, until their latest scores come in. Um, but we also um, have a February 1st is our um, Deadline. So we have we have our early action, early decision, early action, and then um, February first, so that the December 9th test date would be fine. Great, thank you. And then I just wanted to read one comment because it is super important to Alabama Possible's work with educators. But as y'all know, we have all kinds of educators on the line, both counselors and career coaches. We had a great comment from one of our career coaches that they are heavily involved with all of the efforts supporting seniors as they make plans for post-secondary education and this educator was just encouraging y'all to reach out to the state's career coaches as they are an important component in student success so if you're already connected with your local counselors we encourage you to also connect with your local career coaches so thank you for bringing that to our attention christine and now i'll turn it back over to you yoruba all right, thank you. Um, the hour is drawing nigh, so let's go ahead and answer any poll questions that we have left. Um, and these are exceptionally important. Again, we want to make certain that our educators on the high school level, that you all um, complete these poll questions so that you'll be eligible for your professional credit. So we have our first poll launched, gauging your satisfaction with today's webinar. I will give it a few moments to get everyone's response to that before going on to a second set of questions. So hang on for that second set. Great. So I'm ending this poll and now you should see another poll launched on your screen. Again, thank you so much for your feedback. It really assists us with improving these webinars. Okay, thank y'all so much. I will turn it back over to Yoruba.
All right. Thank you so much. Um, as you all see, we do have our professional development hours, our um, course number and our section number. Please make certain that um, you do go ahead and register your hours using this link online so that you can ensure that you do get your professional development hours. The course number for this webinar is 309 514 and the section number is 486-866. Um, and remember, you will get these the slide deck so you'll be able to have um, the course number and the section number on hand. All right, we do want to make sure that we provide you all with the save the date um, dinner and conversation with Alabama Possible. We're going to be celebrating or we are celebrating 30 years um, and we're talking about changing the narrative. So please make certain to, and know that you all are um, we welcome you to participate. Um, it will be Thursday, November 2nd at 6 p.m. at the Florentine. So please feel free to join us. We, we do look forward to having you as our guest. Um, and for our educators, we know that this is a really big month for you all. So we've included a bunch of links um, in this PowerPoint that will take you directly to the documents that you'll need. Um, we do have the waiver form the list of participating colleges, um, along with the sign out sheet, which is a template, I believe that's a Word document, so you can modify it for your high school. But we did wanna make sure that we shared those links with you all. And last but not least, we just wanna encourage you all to stay connected. So if you have any questions whatsoever, please don't hesitate to contact us, you can, um, email us at Alabama goes to college um, at alabamapossible.org. Or you can feel free to call us on our hotline, which is um, at our help desk, which is 334 316 6155. Please don't ever hesitate to reach out to us. And last but not least, thank you so much to our four representatives. Um, we understand that this is a busy season for you all, uh, being in education, either in um, secondary or post-secondary, this is a very busy season. So we want to thank all of you, um, our registrants, and also our panelists for taking time out this morning to share your wisdom. So thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your morning. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thanks. Can I mention something, Yoruba, right quick? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I just want to uh, throw in a plug for our financial aid office. They will be having a counselor's workshop on November 1st from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And if anyone is interested or have not received any information from our financial aid office, please reach out. It's a worthwhile event, and they will be covering some of the new financial aid uh, rules and regulations that will be uh, going uh, taking place. So if you're interested, please, you can reach out to our financial aid office at Chattanooga Valley Community College so you can get yourself registered. All right. Thank you so much. You all have a good morning and thank you for attending.